Hey guys, this is Pratik from Edureka. I welcome you all to this interesting session on what is SQL. But before we get started, let's have a look at the agenda for today's session. First of all, let's understand what is traditional file system. Moving further into the discussion, I shall give you a brief information regarding the evolution of SQL. Followed by that, I'll explain what is SQL. And after that, I'll discuss some of its advantages. And in the end, we shall take a look at how SQL is used in the real time. I hope you have understood the agenda. But before moving further, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, then do subscribe to stay connected. So with that being said, let's get started. The first topic is traditional file system. In today's computing world, managing data is a huge task. For our convenience, we store the data and documents in different location, and this is called file system. Without a file system, information placed in the storage medium would be one large body of data. We won't be able to tell where information stops and where it begins. Let's look at the formal definition. File system is one which controls how the data is stored and retrieved. It is nothing but information stored in different computer files. Usually while storing a small amount of data, the file system is effective. But when it comes to storing the enormous amount of data, the file system fails. Let's look at some of the problems of file system. The first problem is data redundancy. When we store similar data in different location of a computer, data gets duplicated and this will lead to data redundancy. This will increase the storage size and also leads to failure of security features. Because of this, the file system is highly vulnerable in nature. Data redundancy will cost the user not only in terms of security, but also economically. The second problem is limited data sharing and lack of security. Data sharing and security are closely related. Sharing data among multiple users introduces a lot of security risk. In terms of spreadsheet data and other documents, the inbuilt file system programs provides only the basic security option, but they're not used most of the time. Because of this negligence, we might face some bigger problems in the near future. The third problem is the difficulty of getting quick answers. This is one of the major problems in file system because file system doesn't allow multiple users to access the same data at a given point of time. This means that multiple users at different work location cannot access the same data simultaneously. This will limit the access to important data if multiple users search for the same data at a given point of time. The next problem is data dependence. In the file system, files and records are described by a specific physical format that is coded into the application by the programmers. If the format of any one record was changed, then we need to make sure that all the remaining records format is updated. This information has to be updated in the system also. Any changes in storage structure or access methods could greatly affect the process. This might result in failure of that particular application. So these were a few problems that were faced using the file system and the solution for this is SQL and database. Let's now look at the evolution of SQL. SQL was developed at IBM by Donald E. Chamberlain and Raymond F. Boyce in the early 1970s. It was initially called as SQL that is structured English query language. But later it was changed to SQL because SQL was a trademark of UK based engineering company. In the year 1986, American National Standard Institute that is ANSI and the International Standards Organization that is ISO have deemed the SQL language as a standard language in relational database communication. This is how SQL evolved. Since we have understood the evolution of SQL, Let's head to the next topic that is what is SQL? People from technical background may find this silly, but for a beginner, it is really important to understand each and every aspect of this topic. The main focus of this entire session will be on this part. So now let's understand what is SQL? SQL is an abbreviation for structured query language, which also goes by the name SQL even today. It is a language used by the database domain. SQL can be used only for relational type database and not for the others. Relational database is a database which has the tabular method of storing data. Usually it consists of rows and columns. Let's now see what SQL can do. SQL is a core of relational database which is used for accessing and managing the database. With the help of SQL statements, you can add columns, update or delete rows of data. 
We can also retrieve information, modify database, and perform many more actions. The different subsets of SQL commands are as follows DDL, that is, Data Definition Language. It simply deals with the description of the database schema and used to create and modify the structure of database objects in the database. It allows you to perform various operations on the database, such as create, alter, and delete objects. DDL is very popular and extensively used when compared to other commands. Moving on to the next command, DCL, that is Data Control Language. It allows you to control access to the database. Grant or revoke are the DCL commands. Grant gives user access privileges to the database, while revoke withdraws user access privileges given to the user with the help of grant command. So the next command is DML, that is Data Manipulation Language. It allows you to access and manipulate data. It helps you to insert, update, delete, and retrieve data from the database. So what does each of these command do? So the insert command is used to insert data into the table, while update is used to update existing data within the table, and at last, delete is used to delete records from the database. The final command is TCL, that is Transaction Control Language. It allows you to deal with the transaction of the database. Few of the TCL commands are commit, rollback, save point, and set transaction. So these were the SQL commands. To understand SQL in a better way, let's use an analogy. If two people want to communicate with each other, then they have to use a language that is understood by both of them. Here, John wants to start a conversation with Dave, and he uses English language to start his conversation. This language is known to Dave as well, so they will continue their conversation. But what if one of them didn't understand what the other person spoke? There won't be any conversation at all. Relating this analogy, if we consider these two people, one as user and the other as database, then that language which is used to communicate between these two is called SQL. Similarly, how a language has the grammar and various rule on how it should be used, even the SQL has its own directives. I hope you have clearly understood what exactly SQL is. Let's now head to the next topic that is advantages of SQL. So the first feature is SQL has well-defined standards. As it says, Developers of SQL has clearly mentioned how exactly each and every query has to be written. There is no room for ambiguity when it comes to writing a query. The standards have to be followed. The second advantage is SQL is easy to learn. Yes, SQL is a language that is used to work with a database. Since SQL has a large user base as well as well-defined standard, for a beginner, it is really easy to learn. The next one is, in SQL, we can create multiple views. This is one of the unique and early feature that SQL came up with. View is nothing but creating a virtual table. A virtual table is a temporary table for certain use. By doing this, we can protect the integrity of the data. SQL has the ability to not only create a single view, but can create multiple views. The fourth one is SQL queries are portable in nature. It means we can execute the SQL query in one system and execute the same query in an another system without changing the format. But the condition is that the environment setup of these two systems has to be same, else the query won't be executed. The next advantage is interactive. The main purpose of SQL is to communicate with the database. We can write complex queries to fetch the results from the database, and these queries can be easily understood by anyone. So these were some of the advantages of SQL. Let's head to the next topic, that is SQL in real time. Since SQL is a language that is used to operate on the database, we need to look at the bigger picture of the data management industry. Here, if I say database, it includes SQL language as well. The database is used in different verticals like online stores, healthcare providers, libraries, financial industry, retail industry, government agencies, and many more. Now let's consider some real-time examples of the use of SQL and database. The first one is Education sector. Database systems are frequently used in schools, colleges, and universities to store and retrieve the data. This data may be regarding student staff details, course details, exam details, attendance details, and fees details. There's a lot of interrelated data that needs to be stored and retrieved efficiently. 
To understand the magnitude of impact that the database has made in this field, try to imagine the days when the results were only declared on the school notice board. Isn't it easier now to access your exam results with just one click? Who wouldn't say no to such a drastic change? Also nowadays, the online exams have increased significantly. This has increased the speed of assessment when compared to the olden days. All these are possible because of SQL and database technology. The next sector is healthcare sector. There were days when people used to stand in front of the clinics and hospitals to get an appointment with a doctor, but now the time has changed. In hospitals and medical institutions, maintaining data related to doctors, patients, and staff is a huge task. Effectively coordinating among these three has to be handled seamlessly. With the help of SQL and database, this industry has gained a lot. With the introduction of SQL and database, inventory management has been effective. The next one is retail industry. Every year, leading e-commerce gents come up with great offers, discounts based on your personalized shopping. To come up with all this, they use database and other technology. The industry utilizes the database and SQL technology extensively. In retail industry, customers' data has to be managed effectively. There's no scope of error when it comes to handling the data. With the instigation of SQL and database system, the retail industry can not only secure the data, but also can get the real-time analysis, which in turn helps them to make a lot of profit. And the final one is financial sector. When we speak about this sector, it's really hard to even imagine what goes behind the scene. Only the experts know how much data will be processed every second. Managing money, assets, shares, etc. in a real time is a tedious task. SQL and database technology is helping the financial sector to achieve its primary task. SQL queries can be also used to check the fraudulent activities. Looking at the issues of fraudulent activity, effective fraud detection requires a financial organization to process a huge amount of customer purchasing data. So these organizations have to store and retrieve data effectively without causing any burden on another branch of the same organization. These were the few sectors and industries where the SQL is used in day-to-day -day transaction. This brings us to the end of this session. I hope you have clearly understood what is SQL, its evolution, and its application. If you have any queries or doubts regarding this session, please let me know in the comment section, and I'll get back to you with an answer. Thank you guys for watching this video, and have a great day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!